Hi, hello, welcome to Chasm Words. My name is Sam and I'm really happy to see you today. If you're new here, I post bookish and reading content weekly, sometimes twice weekly actually has been the habit I've gotten into. And this is another reading vlog. So today is Thursday, March 18th, day after St. Patrick's Day. I totally forgot yesterday was St. Patrick's Day. Not that I like celebrate or anything, but it yesterday was the one year anniversary of like everything shutting down here so that's exciting it also would have been the one year anniversary of me being laid off from my job which I have my job again <laughs> just to like start on a cheery note huh I wanted to start the vlog off pretty much by showing you what I'm reading right now um so yeah we'll just we'll just go uh, my main read is If on a Winter's Night a Traveler by Italio Italo Calvino it's really good. I, I'm i really enjoying it. It's a really strange, almost surreal kind of text. It is this story of you, the reader, trying to read a book called If on a Winter's Night a Traveler. And like the first chapter describes you going to the store and getting the book. And then the second like chapter is the first like part of If on a Winter's Night a Traveler. And then you find out, wait, the book is damaged and you have to go back to the store. It's it's so cool. It's so weird. It is r really delightful. I find myself getting sucked in even though I'm like unmoored the entire time I'm reading it and it's just it's so good and I'm tabbing it. There are so many quotes and like moments that just like delight me and <laughs> make me think because it really does make you think about how books work and I did want to just read like a part of it because it is so cute, um, just how it's described. Following this visual trail, you have forced your way through the shop past the thick barricade of books you haven't read, which were frowning at you from the tables and shelves trying to cow you. But you know you must never allow yourself to be awed, that among them there are extend there extend for acres and acres the books you needn't read, the books made for purposes other than reading, books read even before you open them since they belong to the category of books read before being written. And thus, you pass the outer girdle of ramparts, but then you are attacked by the infantry of the books that if you had more than one life, you would certainly also read, but unfortunately your days are numbered. With a rapid maneuver, you bypass them and move into the phalanxes of the books you mean to read, but there are others you must read first. The books too expensive now, and you'll wait till they're rem remaindered. The books ditto when they come out in paperback. Books you can borrow from somebody. Books that everybody's read, so it's as if you had read them too. Eluding these assaults, you come up beneath the towers of the fortress, where other troops are holding out. The books you've been planning to read for ages. The books you've been hunting for years without success. The books dealing with something you're working on at the moment. The books you want to own so they'll be handy just in case. The books you could put aside maybe to read this summer. The books you need to go with other books on your shelves. The books that fill you with sudden inexplicable curiosity not easily justified. Now you have been able to reduce the countless embattled troops to an array that is, to be sure, very large, but still calculable in a finite number. But this relative relief is then undermined by the ambush of the books read long ago, which it's now time to reread, and the books you've always pretended to have read, and now it's time to sit down and really read them. With a zigzag dash, and you shake them off and leap straight into the citadel of the new books whose author or subject appeals to you. Even inside this stronghold, you can make some breaches in the ranks of the defenders, dividing them into new books by authors or on subjects not new for you in general, and new books by authors or on subjects completely unknown, at least to you, and defining the attraction they have for you on the basis of your desires and needs for the new and the not new, for the new you seek in the not new, and for the not new you seek in the new. Like, it's so good! It's so good. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I actually, yesterday at work, I saw we had a different Otalo Covino novel, Invisible Cities, so I picked that up because I was like, oh, I'll probably read that really soon after this. Odd enough for me, I'm actually reading several books. Two, I guess three of these books, uh, it wouldn't be weird for me to have them like in the pile and I'll show you why because there's like reasons behind them. But I'm actually reading like another book that in, in a lot of ways is like a book that I would like main I guess <laughs> um and that is Legend Born by Tracy Dion I'm actually listening to the audiobook of this and I'm really enjoying it I am at further than I thought so I'm pretty far it's so good it is so good it is about Brie a girl who 
uh, ends up being accepted into a pre-college college program so it's like she's still 16 she's still technically a high schooler but she's admitted into a residential and educational program at a prestigious college she's, so she ends up admitted into this program the same day that her mother ends up dying in a tragic car accident and the story picks up I think it's three months later as she's beginning her first year in this program and she kind of finds herself overhearing and stumbling into a secret society that is somewhat reminiscent of like shadow hunters I'm not gonna lie but in like not in a like copying way but in a I love these kinds of tropes way they're demon hunters they've been around forever they're all over the world or actually I think they might just be all over the country I'm very uncertain about that but they're everywhere they've got like sort of their own government and structure and they're sort of descended from the Knights of the Round Table and King Arthur himself and it is so cool guys this book is so cool I love it the writing is beautiful it fully embraces race politics as part of the plot which I think is really important especially because you know it is a really relative part of our society unfor unfortunately and Brie has to deal with uh, racist shitholes treating her differently because she's black and I feel weird saying that I love that that's a part of the plot but I really appreciate it because I feel like we don't see in fantasy a lot of straightforward like dealing with that kind of thing but Legendborn absolutely loving it it is so good I ah I love it so much. I'm gonna be so sad when it's done. And the narrator for the audiobook, I'll put her name down here. She's so good. I absolutely adore her voice. She's amazing. So the next book I'm reading, I actually haven't technically started yet, just because I literally picked it up yesterday, but it is The Finish Way. This is a non-fiction, like, self-help type book um, by Kadya Panzar. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm on a big Moomin kick right now. I've been watching an episode of Moomin Valley every night before going to bed. It's been really, really great for my just inner peace. And I thought I would pick this up and just, I don't know, see what kind of, uh, what kind of like life advice it gives. It's things that like are on the back that just really drew me to it. Like movement as medicine, how walking, biking, and swimming every day are good for what ails us force therapy, healthy eating, the gift of sisu, I think, uh, which is like a Finnish type of courage, grit, and determination. Um, so I don't know, I haven't technically started it yet, but I am planning to start it either today or this weekend, um, depending on when I have time. It's something that it's a nonfiction book. I won't mind highlighting in it. I probably will highlight it in a lot, uh, make notes and stuff because, um, yeah, I think it's going to be really interesting. And then these next two books. So this is actually reread Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I am rereading it slowly and annotating in it. Um, let me get you a page that has like annotations. So, like annotating it in a little bit. I am underlining favorite quotes but I am mostly looking for historical like seeds um, and like things that would have been just like regular for living in that period because I'm working on writing a project uh, set in this or similar time period. So yeah, I thought why not return to Pride and Prejudice, a book I loved. Like I only read it last year, but I absolutely fell in love with it. So yeah, I'm, in, I'm enjoying doing that. I don't even read it every day. I read it um, a couple days a week and that's been good. And then finally, we have Bluettes by Maggie Nelson. This is so good. It's not quite prose. It's not quite poetry it's kind of about the color blue and it's kind of not and it is just absolutely lovely i'm coming up on the halfway point which is kind of sad because i'm gonna have to say goodbye to this book soon you know i'm gonna be like oh i'm done with you um yeah it's a bit melancholy idea i i'm still loving it i i got really emotional yesterday the passage that i was reading because i only let myself read about five pages of it a day i got really emotional and i was like ah why does this touch me so much? Um, but yeah, it's really good. It's really good. I definitely am interested in reading more of Maggie Nelson's work. She has a book called The Argonauts, and that's the one that most interests me. So I'll probably pick that up not long after finishing this one.
but that's my reading updates. I will try to keep you updated on reading as the week goes on. This will probably be more like a week and a half long vlog. Um, yes, other things I really want to accomplish this week. I really want to clean up my room. It feels so messy. I do have the entire weekend off, so I should have plenty of time. I'm going to kind of cut it into two. I'm going to be like the moving things around portion and then the cleaning up portion will probably be two different days. But I really want to get it done because I don't know, I'm feeling really like messy. The room's like messy, but it's not like as messy as it can get, but it's messy enough that it's like messing with my head. That's probably the big goal for the next couple days. I do work today and tomorrow. I think I close? No, I think I work the mid shift tomorrow, so that's good. And I close today, so probably won't get much done after I leave for work, but never say never.
it's been a couple days. Um, <laughs> oops. Um, I don't really have a good excuse. I've been working a lot. And in between working, I just haven't had time to film anything, any, any updates or anything. Um, but nothing exciting has happened, like life-wise, so no life updates are really needed. Reading-wise, I did finish If on a Winter's Night a Traveler by Italo Calvino, and it was, guys, look at all these tabs I have. I almost never tab books, but there are just so many amazing things in here, and I just, I loved it so much. There were some parts near the end that I was like, eh, I don't know how I feel about that. So I only ended up giving it four and a half out of five stars, but I'm definitely, definitely going to be reading more of Italo Calvino this year. I already picked up Invisible Cities, so I'll probably do that sooner than later. Um, it's, guys, it was so good. It was so good. It, I wasn't sure if it managed to stick the landing considering the premise of the book is like that it's books within a book, but it did. It really landed it. I thought it was a great ending. This book functions similarly to how some surreal films function. So like the way the film Mulholland Drive functions is kind of how this book functions, just like in book form. So I will say if that sort of thing throws you off, this book may not be for you. It is really well written, but it isn't made to be an easy read. It, it makes you think about how books and stories work. Um, and it, it makes you really take a look at not necessarily language, but mechanics. Of, of writing and storytelling. It is really good though. Strongly recommend it. At the end of the year, I for Christmas, I like to give um, people books that I've read that year that I enjoyed. And I pick it, you know, I go through my books. I, I pick like my favorite books um, that are like the first in the series. Like I won't like give anyone Chain of uh, Iron because I haven't given anyone Chain of Gold. I, I then I try to like pair it to people and I'm pretty sure If On A Winter's Night The Traveler is going to be a book that I give this year at the holiday season. It's going to be one of those titles. So what am I reading now? I started Bridgerton book two, The Viscount Who Loved Me, and I'm actually fairly far through it. I meant to film an update before I got that far, but that didn't happen. I'm liking this already so much more than book one, and it's not because of Anthony, whom I love in the show, but it's because of Kate, who I absolutely adore. I think she's a much better female lead than Daphne was. Anthony's fine. Like, he's fine. I enjoy him, but he's not, like, my favorite part. My favorite part is Kate. She's great. I love her. I also like the pace of this one a bit more. The other one, I don't know, there was less tension between the characters at the beginning, which was fine, but I find that I just personally enjoy tension more. So, yes. This is uh, the second book in the Bridgerton series, follows Antony and Kate, and this is going to be season two of the show, and I cannot wait to see how they do it. There's already some theories I have how the show is going to tackle, like, scenes I'm like, oh, I bet they're going to draw this scene out, you know, and I'm thoroughly excited for that. Uh, <laughs> so yes, book, already enjoying it much more than book one. I will say it is possible I'm enjoying it more also because there isn't a season of this out yet. I do think that definitely affected my enjoyment of book one. I don't really know how I would have felt about it if I didn't have the show first. Um, and sometimes with adaptations, that's not, a th like, I can keep them apart, you know? But with this one, I could not. I'm also still doing my Pride and Prejudice reread and, like, highlighting and stuff for the book I'm writing or thinking about writing. It's still in, like, thinking stages and this is helping but um about there Wickham just entered the picture this book is so good I was laughing aloud last night when I was reading a section um because Mr. Collins also is just kind of arrived um and I was just I was uh Collins makes me laugh he's so stupid <laughs> I love him bluettes I am nearly done nearly done I'm really sad that it's almost over, but it definitely feels like it's coming to a really great ending point. So I did pick up the Lost, wait, is it called the Lost Book of Spells or the Book of Lost Spells? 
I think it's the Book of Lost Spells. I picked that up. That's going to be my next like poetry thing and it's gorgeous. And it, it's stunning. I, I think I'll finish this and pick that up before the end of this reading vlog. So I'll definitely show you that. And it is just a stunner. I, it's not got a lot of poems in it. It has a fair bit, but it doesn't, it's like oversaturated. So it won't take me nearly as long to read, but I am only going to read one a day and I'm going to like read them aloud and make myself read them aloud because that's how they're meant to be read aloud. So very excited for that one. And finally, and this is so weird that I have like a stack of books. I never read this many books at once. So this is very strange for me, but Finally, Legend Born by Tracy Dion. I kind of stalled out on this one. I was, I am still really enjoying it, but I don't know. I've had a really hard time getting into it. I think if On a Winter's Night a Traveler was so engaging in a different way that I just wanted to read that. And now that I'm reading Bridgerton, my attention is like, oh, I really want to read romance. Um, I am still enjoying Legend Born. I will definitely finish it this month. The audiobook is great, and I'm so glad I'm reading it on audiobook. I'm actually here, like two chapters further in, <laughs> enjoying it still quite a lot. How much else to say regarding that? I think it'll probably end up being five stars. I just haven't been in the mood for fantasy because the other books I was reading were so not fantasy, and I was just like so invested in them at the time. I am thinking I might be reading an e arc after Bridgerton, so I might for a little bit actually start reading the physical copy of Legend Born and finish it up while also reading the e-arc just because I don't like to read ebooks at work. It's on my phone. It's not as easy. Um, but we'll see. We'll see when that comes up. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. All right. <laughs> I was at work and oh my god <laughs> those reveals those plot twists what the fuck was so good was so good five stars this book five stars a hundred percent amazing can't cannot can't, can't get over it we do not have a title or a release date for book two so I suffer. I suffer. I suffer. I also finished this bad boy. Parts of it I liked. I, I think I think well definitely I liked it more than the other one. I think I'm gonna give it three and a half or four. I have to ruminate on that for a little bit. I think actually maybe I gave it what did I give it? I think I wrote it down already. Right? Don't remember. But it's time to pick what I'm reading next. I think I'm gonna do audiobook wise Children of Blood and Bone. I think that just feels what I'm vibing with. Oh, I pulled the books I thought I might read next, but I didn't grab one of them. Okay, so three of the books I'm considering reading next I have physical copies of, and three of them are ARCs. Um, one of them is both a physical copy and an ARC. And that is The Light of the Midnight Stars by Rena Rosner. Um, it sounds very like historical fantasy fairy tale esque. It's compared here to Bear and the Nightingale, Golem and the Genie. Um, and the vibes it also gave off remind me a little bit of Spinning Silver because it does play into uh, Jewish folklore. So I am really interested in this one. This comes out in April, April 13th. And then the two other physical copies I have are um, For Whom the Bell Tolls by Ernest Hemingway. I love Hemingway. I've never read this one. That new docuseries is coming out, so I'm like feeling like I should pick up a Hemingway. And I also am kind of vibing with Emma by Jane Austen right now. So I'm thinking about that. Actually, I think it's safe to say it's not going to be Emma. I'm vibing with it, but I don't really want to read it. I also have a couple e-arcs that I got from Edelweiss. Edelweiss, however you say it. I was considering No Gods, No Monsters by 
uh, uh, Cadwell Turnbull. I don't, I don't 100% know what this is about at all. Um, just don't know. Um, no, it's freezing on me, so I can't really tell you. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on, computer. Oof, I'm cold all of a sudden. I don't even know if this is YA. Um, I don't know anything about it at all just like period what we devour which is by lindsay miller um which i don't know anything about but like the cover is gorgeous oh there's a map in this one so i'm gonna read like the first couple like the first page of each of these and uh let's see hmm interesting the main character is an undertaker it looks like in the lindsay miller yeah okay no gods no monsters does not does not sound that interesting i'm gonna be honest note that one this gone mm -hmm. i do want to read this and it really intrigues me but i'm kind of feeling more like fantasy so i think i'm gonna put for whom the bell tolls aside even though i do really want to read it let's see let's see this one let's see Again, I want to read it, but I'm just not vibing with it at the moment. So that actually leaves what we devour. I, I will be reading what we devour. Um, my next check-in, I will have hopefully have read a little bit. We'll have an actual update on what it's about. What we devour, Lindsay Miller. My next read, how exciting. This one is coming out um i don't know i'll have to look i'll put that in the next update as well but it's not super long uh i woke up hours ago when i normally wake up but my mental health is shit today and i just feel miserable and i'm being triggered by just the thought of leaving my room today so that's just how today is going, which is really fucking lovely, huh? Um, I had like a tiny existential crisis. I think it was triggered uh, by a s something stupid. Um, I got a new bookcase, and that's what I think triggered it because I failed it, and I was like, "Wow, I still feel empty inside." <laughs> weird <laughs> so that's where I'm at mentally right this very moment the bookshelf looks great I'm very happy with it but I think like subconsciously I was like oh, I'll get this and I'll feel better right I'll feel better because my books won't be as messy but I'm like I don't feel better <laughs> I don't feel better. <laughs> um, so that's where I'm at. I'll put in a clip of the bookshelf like right after this because you're probably curious because this is a reading vlog ish. But I just miserable. <sighs> a little bit. Enough for him to go bathroom and just couldn't handle that even. So, um, that's great. I haven't done anything productive in like two weeks. So I don't know. I think I'm gonna edit some video footage until my computer dies. Um, or gets close to dying. And then I'm gonna, I don't know, read or something. I didn't read it all yesterday. Which is fine. I can go like a day without reading. But, um... Maybe that also didn't help. As for the books, I'm not really far in any of the new books I've started. Children of Flood or Bone or, um, I don't even remember what it's called. Like, what, is it What We Devour or something? I don't remember. Could be completely off on that title. Yeah, let me show you the new bookcase. So down here is like the tall books. I've got some statues because I love them, but I literally have no place to put them. 
I've got Lee Bardugo, uh, some other favorites. Victoria Schwab, Lady Taylor, some other favorites, and like two shells of Shadow Hunters. I love the Shadow Hunters book so much, but I'm kind of annoyed by how much space they take up. I'm not gonna lie, I need to find another place to put them somehow. I don't know how or where, but they just take up so much space on the bookcase. Is that stupid of me to just be like, I'm annoyed by how much space they take up? I don't know where I'm gonna put them. Maybe I can put them like here and like stack them. <laughs> That's so stupid. I wanna like display them or something. I just. I'm in a weird mood, I'm sorry. I know, I'm in a weird mood. I should probably do something like uh, put all the regular hardcovers together, like just like one edition of all the regular hardcovers. And then maybe put the special editions on a special shelf. Not an issue for today. Um, growing wise, I think Jake Kristoff will end up getting like a dedicated shelf, kind of like B.E. Schwab has a dedicated shelf. Um, Lainey Taylor will at some point have a dedicated shelf. Um, I'm just sharing Robin Hobb with her. And Robin Hobb will also probably get a dedicated shelf. So really, I just need to move the Shadowhunter book somewhere else. But until I figure out where, they'll stay there. I have so many. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous how many books there are. And I just collect editions as well. And at the very top are the paperback Shadowhunter books. And two other editions of Chain of Oak. Or edition, the Fairy Loot. Um, no, the Lumicrate Chain of Gold and Chain of Iron, which I like, but I just put up there. Hello and goodbye. This is me wrapping up the video. Uh, yesterday's vlog was not great. <laughs> I was having a really horrible day mentally yesterday, and it has carried over a bit until today, but I ended up getting really sick last night. So I was kind of forced to just lay down and sleep early, and I think that helped a little bit. I'm doing better than yesterday, but I'm still not doing well. Love that for me. Uh, but you know what? It's just part of the uh, part of the ups and downs and the daily and the way things go for me. So it happens, I guess. Made it through to the other side. I want to do a final check in with all the books that I've read and been reading. Um, yeah, for the final update. So, uh, first of all, I decided to DNF that book, What We Devour by Lindsay Miller. It's a book that I think I would like to return to. I really liked the aesthetic. It gave me really, like, uh, really positive reminders of Shadow and Bone and The Midnight Lie. So if you like either of those books, What We Devour might be for you. I did only get about 50 pages in. What was really preventing me from getting into it was the magic system was just so hard for me to grasp. Like every time I felt like I was getting it, they would throw something else in there and I was like, wait, hold on. How does this work? How is this fitting together? From what I understood, it was very cool. The vile and the noble, like being sort of like living-ish sentience that you bargained with. But I just, I... It was so confusing. I had such a hard time. I would have to keep going back and reading sections and being like, I still don't understand. And it was just giving me a headache. And I was like, I can't enjoy this book right now. I definitely think that it's a book that in the future I should return to and give another try. I just, I'm like, right now I'm like quality over quantity. And if this book is giving me a headache, I have to move on because I just cannot sit and wallow in these books. So yeah, I DNF'd it. Not really saying it was a bad book because from what I read, it was really enjoyable except for the magic system being really hard to grasp, but I think that's a really personal complaint, so definitely not turning you off this book if you wanted to read it. I really was struggling over what to pick up then, because I was like, I don't want to pick up the next Bridgerton yet, and I do really want to read Brideshead Revisited, but I didn't want to pick that up next, because I was like, that just feels like it's going to be a denser book. So I actually rolled some D&D &D dice for shelf and, or for bookcase and shelf, and it ended up on one of the queer shelves, which, good, I, I like that a lot. And I ended up deciding on This Is How You Lose the Time War by Amal El Motar. 
and Max Gladstone. I think this is going to be the perfect read for me right now. It is about two time traveling agents who are trying to like affect time to get the like outcomes that their agencies want and um, they leave each other's letters and start communicating and I think they fall in love and I'm very excited. I've read about 20 pages, definitely curious love the letter format. I think their voices are so fun and I love like just the way they're describing time travel so far. Like up thread, down thread, braided features. I think that's very cool. So and this is the Illumicrate edition. It came with a, a blue one and a red one and I chose blue because blue. Um, <laughs> I am also still reading Children of Blood and Bone but I am still only like six pages in. I will be listening to this on the ride to work today. I work a mid shift so um, I should have some time to read when I get home as well but yeah I, uh, I'm enjoying it so far. I again not super far don't really know. Don't even really know the plot I'll be honest. Children of Blood and Bone is just one of those books that I've seen recommended so much that I was like okay I may as well read it eventually. Like I picked it up not long after it came out. This is, you know, I guess this is the eighth printing, but I probably picked it up in like 2019, like the year after it came out or something. So, um, oh, I didn't pull Pride and Prejudice. I am still rereading that. I didn't make that much more progress since the last time I probably updated you on it, uh, because I don't read it every day. It's just like every couple days I'll pick it up when I have time. So, oops, I didn't pull that to show you, but, um, yeah, not that much farther. Um, they just had like that party at Netherfield, the ball at Netherfield, I think it was. And like Elizabeth's embarrassed by her family. <laughs> it's a great scene. It's so funny. And I finished Bluettes by Maggie Nelson. It was really good. I finished it yesterday when I was not feeling super great and I was crying over parts of the end and I'm going to read you a small passage in just a moment but I wanted to let you know that I am starting The Lost Spells. This is by Robert McFarlane and Jackie Morris. This book is so lovely. It's just very very pretty. It like like look at that art. It's just so pretty. It's just so pretty. Um, and literally I think the first line in here is uh this is a book of spells to be spoken aloud so i'm going to start this at the beginning of my next reading vlog and i will be reading aloud i don't want to do every single one that feels like it would be not okay i'll do a couple though in the reading vlog and i think this is how we're gonna judge how long the reading next reading vlog is going to be it's how long it takes me to finish the lost spells i'm only doing one one poem a day because they are poems interspersed which is like gorgeous art just I can't, I can't wait I can't wait it's so pretty it's so pretty I know they have another book called the lost word um I'll probably pick that up at some point after this because just gorgeous but to read a section from bluettes it's just a tiny section but it really got me this is uh, just section 229 and it's two lines I'm writing all this down in blue ink so as to remember that all words, not just some, are written in water. This book's really good. Strongly recommend it. I think I gave it four or four and a half stars. Um, so, yes, strongly recommend this one. I definitely want to pick up more of Maggie Nelson's work. I think I want to pick up her poetry next. But we'll see. She's got a couple books that really interest me. So yes, this is it for me for this reading vlog. Um, like I said, the next reading vlog I think is going to be kind of guided by the lost spells. Although the next reading vlog that posts uh, after this one is probably going to be the one dedicated to First Become Ashes because I'm so excited for that book. I will put down whatever else I'm reading to pick up First Become Ashes. I'm just, I cannot wait. Chances of that being like a 24 hour book thing, quite possible. <laughs> I, I will jostle, I read in like 24 hours. Um, 
so I very well could read it to first become ashes in 24 hours we'll see we'll see how the pacing is docile was so quick docile was so good oh my god um, <laughs> but I'm getting ahead of myself I need to go now uh, it's time for work I hope you are all doing well I hope that this video finds you well I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you next time 